to call the uh, April 28th uh, spring finally here school committee meeting to order mm -hmm. uh, before we get started I just wanted to uh, welcome uh, Julie congratulations Thank you. Uh, Thank you. and if you had anything you, anything you wanted to say you don't have to if you don't want it you know, I feel like I've been on RCTV so much recently, and I've thanked everyone in the entire community. So just, I'm very excited about this new opportunity. Looking forward to the year ahead. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, we can have public input. Yes. Public questions. Uh, Nancy, Dr. Precinct 1. Um, I was actually going over the annual town meeting warrant and the two things that I'm concerned about um, as are reflected in the warrant are obviously the budget and an area of concern is behavioral health. So my question is um, because I have raised this issue, I think it dates back four years about why we don't vendor out our behavioral health. Um, I know I've spoken to individual school committee members about this. I spoke to John about this just recently. <coughs> So I guess my question to the school committee is, why aren't we looking into that? If we have looked into it and it's not satisfactory, I guess I'd like some feedback as to that. And if, you know, if there are some concerns, I would like to know why, because it seems like it's a way of actually cutting our costs and increasing our behavioral health, which is a concern that everyone has. Um, when you vendor out, and you bring in mental health services, most of the studies indicate that actually families and students use the behavioral health services that are school-based more. Okay. You know, there's also the concern it's more preventive. You have access to emergency services. You have access to psychopharm. It keeps the psychiatric records separate from the school records. So I guess my question to the school committee is, is there a time frame looking into this, um, particularly since it's a budget concern? Yeah, it, it's it's not something. At least I'm not prepared to answer tonight. No, uh, so I'm presenting it to you. Uh, you know, we can certainly uh, you know caucus on that and find out if it. We can get you the information. I, there, we have looked into it. There were mm -hmm. there are reasons for doing it. There are reasons against it. Um, but we can get we can talk to you about it. So that's that's the feedback I would like at some point. Okay. The other two are. Um, really to address, I requested after the last school uh, department, school committee meeting, two pieces of information from the school department. I'd actually like to know when the district um, results will be available. I know you sent me a copy of the survey, but I was actually interested in the results. Uh, we have not shared those with anyone yet. We're still analyzing the data. So once we do that, then we'll do a presentation. But at this point, we we're not you, prepared to do any presentation. Okay. Is there a time frame? No. At all? Not at this point, no. Okay. Because we haven't, mm -hmm. the, before we even present it to the community, mm -hmm. we're going to be meeting with the principals and talking about it. Mm -hmm. The staff just got their data a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we just haven't had the time as a district leadership team to talk about okay. the data. Okay. And then the other request was I had wanted information about retention, if that was information that you could give me. And as I mentioned in your email, we don't keep that data we've just started doing exit data this year with with employees that are leaving okay so we don't have that information would you have it for this year no so you don't have any of the no data. I just said we just started doing that okay so I'm sorry what was the when it when an employee leaves we're looking at actually retention what was the um, data like of retention an exit interview type yeah. <coughs> not even I wasn't looking for exit interviews I'm looking for actual numbers of teachers leaving the we, district. We have anecdotal well. information of why staff leave, but we, we don't have hard data of the number of teachers or staff that leave for certain reasons. Oh, I wasn't looking for the reasons. I just want the numbers. I just wanted the numbers. Is that actually all I wanted was the number of teachers that leave the district, not, not the reasons. We can give you the numbers, but there's always stories behind the numbers. Oh, no, no, I understand that. I just wanted to have the basic numbers to look at area can, other area school departments. <coughs> Okay. Just retention. Looking at, I'm really, I'm really interested in retention and salary. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, that's I, all. Not, not, not necessarily the stories. We, okay. we can look, we can look at numbers. I don't know how many other districts publicize that information though. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are the two things. Okay. And also to welcome Julie. I think she'll be an excellent addition. Congratulations. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, now uh, we uh, have a on the agenda. We have a uh, uh, kill them presentation, uh, some and a reorganization. But I think we'll we'll just to get Mrs. Giles home to her family. Uh, jump right into the kill them presentation. So good evening, everyone. We're happy to be here tonight. I am Kathy Giles, and this is Kim Adamo. Kim is completing her first year as our library media specialist. I asked Kim to come today because I wanted to highlight some of the amazing things that she's doing with our students uh, over at Killam in the area of technology. Um, we all have been focusing in education on 21st century learning and collaborative collaboration um, amongst students problem solving higher level thinking skills um, and we also have our new tech standards that have rolled out and I know through the community there's been a lot of question about are these tech standards developmentally appropriate um, are we pushing technology at our students at too young of an age or the keyboarding mm -hmm. and the latest thing we've been hearing is about park and you know are our children going to be able to handle that type of assessment um, and I always say to my staff and the parents at Killam we're not preparing our students to take park what we do each and every day is preparing our students for their current world as well as their future world and um, using technology in meaningful ways so kim's going to demonstrate some of the things that highlights of this year um, but i can assure you that she'll do a quick clip of one grade level project but she's done many 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 so kim so hello, uh, my name is Kim Adamo. Thank you so much for letting me come tonight and to tell you how much I enjoy working here in Reading and how much it is an honor to work with the students I do with every day. I'm gonna begin my presentation the same way I begin my day at Killam, is I'm playing our daily news show for you that I film with the students. So this is our Killam News Today show that we film right in our very own news studio. One of my favorite things that I do, I always stick with the same students for the whole week, and this is our Monday broadcast. If I showed you Friday's broadcast, you would be looking at 
more confidence. Uh -huh. It's almost like they grow five inches in the course of a week. It's a great way to teach the speaking and listening standards. And as you see later on, I use the Killam Newsroom for um, all grade levels to do all different types of um, projects with them. We did a cloudy with the chance of meatball weather forecast with the first grade. Um, I do a lot of multimedia with the kids. I brought today my flip chart. So I have this, it sits in my media center. These are all of our tech standards. Not to bore you with seeing them all, but I flip to whatever standard my project is teaching. Um, many of my projects incorporate multiple standards at once. I'm going to start with some of the fifth grade projects we did this year. So we used a program called Animoto. Um, they, in science class, were learning about biomes. So they came into the media center and they um, did research on the internet using pre-selected websites. And they also used Encyclopedia Britannica database to do their biome research. And from their research, they created a small video presentation using Animoto to highlight what they learned. It works in a slide format, but it's a little bit more interesting to watch than your basic PowerPoint presentation. The best way, I just listen to it out of the computer. This is an example. So she was doing deciduous forest. She picked her own music. She uploaded all the photos herself. She selected the template to fit her research. One other project. So with the fifth grade, we also, in celebration of our um, Massachusetts Children's Book Awards, we had a, um, a presentation which we called the Boscars. It was our own version of the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And um, the fifth grade all made movie trailers using iMovie on their favorite MCBA book. And they came out really great. I always tell students the biggest compliment they can give me is to tell me they use something I taught them at school, at home, and I saw so many videos that kids made over school vacation week using iMovie, using the technology they learned in the library. So this was one of my favorites. This was for a book called When Life Gives You a Jet. So they filmed all of it themselves, they started it, they took pictures off the internet to add to it, put all the typing in themselves. themselves as part of the trailer that was shown on the big screen. We had it in the auditorium at our Boscars party. So to move on to fourth grade, um, I did a, a long unit on digital citizenship with them because as I'm sure we all know, kids have lots of access to technology, but they don't always know how to use it appropriately. So we talk about, um, they each got to create a digital superhero. So we talked about how the internet, the internet had infinite power and that we just had to learn to kind of channel it. So each student had to come up with their own digital superhero. They created the superhero using a program called Hero Eyes. So they had to cut and you know, clip and drag, and choose whether they wanted wings or different types of hands on it. Then they had to um, export that project, save it to the hard drive of the computer, and then we imported it into Microsoft Word, where it became a hard copy. They typed up their um, 
Their hero had to find a problem on the internet and find a solution for it, how their superhero would kind of fight crime on the internet. So they used their typing skills. They had to format into Microsoft Word, pick what color or font they wanted to use, import and size that graphic they created. From there, we printed them out, and they took photos of their project using an iPad. We uploaded them into a free app called Chatterpix and they recorded their voices um, speaking as their superheroes. They added a little digital mouth to each one of them. So here's a sample of some of the projects. Superhero Hacks Saver destroys all hacks by flying into the computer's USB port and destroying all the hacks on the that under gods, we, we stop hacking for real. We secure bank accounts. It's a woman. She can delete stuff and help with the internet. Digital Destroyer. He smashes bad pictures. Cyberman. Cyberman uses his uses super strength to stop cyberbullying and beat up inappropriate pictures. Unhacking God. Unhacking God stops people from hacking. He, he uses his bubble arms to blow their devices away. Fantastic friend. <laughs> My superhero will replace words with magic wings. The wire. The superhero, the wire, wire, fights the crime hacking and stealing private information. Mrs. Fierce Fighter. My, my digital superhero fights cyberbullying. She can fly and zap people that are being mean. I am Dr. Desktop. I use trash cans and folders to stop credit card hacking and stop inappropriate uses of computers. Hacker Stopper. Hacker Stopper prevents hacking on private she stops incorrect facts on the wiki or the and uses electronics to prevent hacking. <coughs> so that was just a sample of some of the projects that the fourth graders came up with. And we spent um, at least four classes on this. There was hands up at every single class, asking all different questions about hacking and how you to protect your information on the internet. So I felt like the kids um, really got to contribute all that they know and want to know more about on the internet. Um, we also use um, the computers for ELA. This is poetry units that I did with the third grade using um, a website called Read, Write, Think. These are templates, so these are Diamante poems. This is an example of a haiku poem that third graders, I can pass these around. Um, my favorite are we used a program called Word Mover, and they had to actually move like the magnetic letters. So they moved the words around, clicking and dragging, they can change. Um, the size of them, they could change the color to enhance their poem. And these are some examples of poems that the third grade did. Yeah. These are acrostic poems they used. Mm -hmm. And again, all of these links are available for students to use from home. And many of the students told me they went home and wrote their own poems using the templates on the website. Um, I did lots of great projects with the second grade that enhanced the social studies curriculum they're doing. These are all examples of um, Native American projects we did. So we made winter counts using a program called Kidspiration. So a winter count is a way that Native Americans would track a year of their life from winter to winter. And so the students made um, chose one important event in their life and then picked a boat, a picture, because that's the Native Americans drew pictures inside of um, buffalo skins. And so it goes in a circle like a winter count, and then down here is where they typed chronologically when the events happened in their lives. So these are two of the winter counts. These are electronic Pueblos that they designed using a program called Paint. They sized all of the different um, shapes and made the letters clicking and dragging with their mouth. So again, using the tech skills, but not even realizing that they're learning the tech skills. These are totem poles that we made. And then this project um, was part of our month-long heritage study. So they did research on Encyclopedia Britannica, um, looking up their family's heritage. They also used Time for Kids and National Geographic. And we concluded the program by using a free app called Pic Collage, where they made a travel poster. So they used their flag as a backdrop and then took different pictures from the internet. They sized them with their fingers on the iPad, typed their names in, and created a collage of their research. With the first grade, 
Um, we did cloudy with a chance of meatball weather forecasts. So we began, I began by reading the story, cloudy with a chance of meatball. And then we went on a um, database called Pebble Go, and we did nonfiction research on how weather forecasters do, do um, weather, what type of tools they use, what meteorologists use to predict the weather, how they don't actually stand in front of a map, but they stand in front of a green screen like we do in our Killam newsroom. So what they got to do at the end was make their own weather forecast using this template I created using um, the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball book. So they filled in the blanks. They drew their own pictures. And then we took a photo of these pictures with an iPad and uploaded them to green screen. And then I filmed the students in the green screen room doing their forecasts. And I'll just show you a quick clip. They came out so cute. Great this, now. this is first, first grade. grade, and the, they practiced. Many of them did not want to use the script, so they practiced so they could they memorized it. So that's their own artwork behind them. So we put this link on Edline, the parents could watch them from home, and one of the parents said she watched it a hundred times. <laughs> we played these at the learning fair when the, the parents came in, so they were on the smart board. And I actually have a TV behind my desk now, so when the classes come in, I put their projects up, and then they come in and say, that's me on TV. <laughs> proud of them because this for many of them this was their first experience with public speaking and so they were definitely nervous but they kind of practiced and stuck with it and they all said right they all said they were very happy with the finished product and then I'll just quickly show you a project so public speaking I really feel comes kind of in baby steps so one of the things I love doing is using a program called Chatterpix, the same one that I used with the fourth grade, where they can record their voice. Because sometimes that's the first step for many for public speaking. So we created, I did a whole gingerbread unit study with them where we read all different versions of the gingerbread story. And at the end, they created a gingerbread man of their own using a computer program. And then they printed them out. And we took a picture of them and loaded them into Chatterpix. They had to type their name in themselves and then move them over, change whatever color they wanted. And then we recorded them. Run, run, fast you can, you can't catch me, I'm Okay, so that is a sampling of just some of the projects. This isn't even probably half of them that I've done with the students this year. So we definitely didn't spend all of our time focusing on the park. We had a lot of fun. 
Um, so I wanted to close with, this is actually something I learned at our Blue Ribbon Conference. So this is an app where you take a picture, and it's sort of the new take on the Wordle. And then, so I did this with two of the fifth grade students, and I will actually be doing the whole fifth grade. It'll be part of their moving on ceremony. So this is, it's kind of sort of hard to see up here, but he came up with 10 words to describe himself. Hmm. And, um, and then we put it into the program, and it made his, you know, it superimposes it over his picture of himself. And here's another example of another student. And this is one I did. Or kill him. So that's a picture of our school and all of the words to describe our school. So thank you so much for letting me come in and share. I hope I didn't take too long. And does anyone have any questions? What, why do they have to grow up? <laughs> Sorry. It's Excuse such a time. fun <laughs> age to teach. I'm like, I'm dying here. Missing my kill him. I know. We love it. Well, did you have a question? I did, it's actually for our student representative. Oh, okay, great. So that does not look like elementary school that I remember. I'm wondering, is that sort of what you remember, or is this actually different from just a couple of years ago when you were in elementary school? I remember like learning like the homeroom keys in elementary school, and like, but nothing like this. This is great, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask just a quick follow-up. I, I, the second part of that question is, do you see, as high school students, do you see how this could transition you, transition these kids into middle school and high school? Are you using technology like this in your work now? I, yeah. I, mean, I know the answer, but. <coughs> yeah. Yes. I was just, this seems like the whole thing, as in it, weaves in the motivation to learn, the love of learning, the fun, and it gives feedback. I was just looking at the acrostic for the kill em. Mm -hmm. I mean, when kids love where they are, when they love what they're learning, when they love how they're learning, and they want to take it to the next step, when they want to work during vacation, and they share it with their parents, and then the parents see the enthusiasm and share the enthusiasm, it's like this, um, it's what I would dream education would be at all levels mm -hmm. and I would think that it's also a release because if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're feeling comfortable asking mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. then uh, that can take I, I'm going the next step but I would see that as taking down some of the anxiety and what I also noticed is that they're all different mm -hmm. at least the ones mm -hmm. we have here mm -hmm. And how often are kids too afraid to try something different on a project so that art projects might end up mirroring each other? Right. But they didn't here. That's the beauty of standards-based education because you say what the standard is. And, you know, with the tech, you give them the tech standards, but then they get to go and use their mode and um, be inspired in their own creativity and passion. The other thing I think it, do you mind if I continue? No, go ahead. The, the other thing that I noticed is that it, the sort of different intelligences, it gives kids who might have mm -hmm. struggle with one mm. thing the ability sure. to compensate or fly with another thing. Like if they're not comfortable with the artwork that goes in the green room, they're speaking over it and there were things that shown that might have come from the speaking, maybe not so much from a representative piece of art, but they went together and they allowed <coughs> the Absolutely. kids to shine. I do have one question Sure. more. You mentioned about the kids working over vacation. Was that by choice? Oh, yeah, because no, that was by choice. I don't, I, didn't, I don't actually really assign homework. They were making their own videos. So the mom sent me in, and she said, what a fun way to see my kids spend their eight school vacation week. So in iMovie, you can use these templates. So, you know, it, it helps you kind of put the, mu the music in, and it makes it feel like a real production piece. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the kids really are drawn to, mm -hmm. is that they can film themselves, and it looks like this live action movie. Mm -hmm. And can kids, can, I'm sorry, I keep mm -hmm. having these. Can, can kids continue using this app if they love it? Oh, like yeah. If they're motivated yeah. to keep 
doing other things can they absolutely continue? and are most kids do they have the equipment at home to do this so we um, kind of do a little survey of who has access to technology and who might not have access to technology and then we privately help support whether it be with a donation or something so all students in our school have some type of technology at home and almost every app I use and it's on purpose is free you know I really do try to find ones that are free um, there's, I've never used an app with the students that are more than that's more than five dollars and I'm always happy I mean this is actually my own iPad and I bring it into work every day and everyone's happy you know welcome to use it I like to um, all of like the read write and think that's that's a free website and all of the links I put up on our headline page and I have a student who loves poetry and she uses it all the time but she just has to click on the link she doesn't actually have to kind of fish out and find it on the web so I just want to say um, I'm most impressed with you know the creativity piece of it because you really don't have that many opportunities other than, mm -hmm. let's say, in an art class to really be creative. Mm -hmm. And having been a coordinator of art in another district, um, it, what you just talked about, um, Linda, is probably the most important thing in art, is to be able to express it differently than someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's really, you know, it enhances um, the arts education and uh, along with the great technology that they're learning. So I commend you for this great job. job. Great. <coughs> I just was uh, thinking about how we've seen Carrie Gallagher present mm -hmm. the um, Rockets. Uh, Rocket help desk. help desk. Oh, it is Help Desk. Okay. And that's going to be a class next year yes, at is. the high school. And there, I was, it seems like there'd be some great synergies with, with Carrie yeah. and, and those students and her team um, in terms of maybe just giving you ability to you know spend more time with students, um, maybe get more breath. And so along those lines, I was sort of wondering, um, it seems, I'm always just totally blown away by how much you can accomplish and you've got 25 kids in your class. Um, so I guess one of my questions was, as you sort of start to th see the things that you want to continue to do and grow and expand, what do you, what do you need to do that as you look you know, forward a year down the road? Just sort of wondering what kinds of what have you thought about what kinds of resources you need. You know, we, will Carrie and maybe some of her students mm -hmm. uh, be part of a next step, or um, you know, just do you need you know do you need more old older iPads that people aren't using too much <laughs> right now that you could uh, you know. It, you I know. think the next level that, uh, and you just touched upon it, is really reaching out and doing some more mentoring mm -hmm. with some of the high school, having some of the high school students who might really be passionate about working with students and technology to have them come over and do some um, of that at the end of the day. I forget the program, but we have all our students from the high school coming over to support in the classrooms. We've also, Field what is it called? Field, Field seminars, that's right. Um, we've also reached out to Endicott College and they have some interns there that are uh, getting their degrees in coding and you know, tech design or web design. And so we were trying to arrange that. Hopefully we're gonna have some of that for next year. Um, and also parents, like you know, a big goal for Killam is to really um, build up that outreach to families and community and having parents who are in the field or ha are passionate about doing technology, mm -hmm. having them come in and work with us. Um, and we do have one mom who it, teaches technology courses up at Endicott and she just came in and helped us use an Amazon stick and plug it into our flat screen in the front hall so any pictures that teachers take on, with their um, iPads, their school iPads, instantly go hmm. right in yeah. all of the projects that Kim does on an iPad instantly go so those are projected in our front hall I'll close on a personal note um, when my daughter Claudia who's now turning 20 was at Parker she worked with Robin Farazani and um, I can't remember who the media specialist was back then but um, they were doing Parker News live yeah. mm. and uh, that sparked a passion for Claudia now she's at her second year at Clemson and she's going into web design and graphic design but it was that back in sixth grade that really got her on board with the technology so I'm sure that Kim is doing the same thing at Killam and um, really inspiring students 
first year. This is her first year and she's doing a phenomenal job. So um, I felt it was important to share with you. And if you hear are our students park ready, you please say college and career ready. And yes, they are. <laughs> and um, so you're all going to use one of those apps for your next school committee and uh, we'll be yeah. here to watch how you do with all of those, okay? So, Start to do chatter picks, you'd be great at that. Oh, I'd be great at it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really, uh, really enjoyed the last piece uh, and I think you said you've just done the two students at this point. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'd love to see that. I, I, I mean, that's very interesting to me to see how they describe themselves. That's that's. What I want to do is um, make a questionnaire, so what they want to do for a living, their favorite sport, their favorite hobby, the three adjectives describe themselves, and then they have to go to four different classmates and have those mm -hmm. classmates come up with adjectives. Oh, so it's kind of a cross. Um, and then actually it will be my, because it is, they, I love the fifth grade. They're such a wonderful group of kids. So it will be my gift to them. So, I'm so I, saw, the I saw two soccer players. I'm hoping there's a few football players that uh -huh. haven't that done their I'll make sure. They were my guinea pigs. They were so funny today. They're like, we're happy to, happy to do it. We thought it'd be fun to do staff ones. Oh, yeah, right? That would be but great. But that app, you can do a skyscraper. You know, and use all different. So, I mean, it has a lot of math implications as well. Like, I was already thinking the things I could do with this app. One ninety nine. <laughs> it's That's called awesome. um, photo a word photo. So and you can take a picture of anything and then put whatever words you want in it, and it will take the shape of those words. That's great. Thank you all. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. All our projects. Yeah. So are those those? Oh, yeah. Those, those. Those, those, those. Here's two more. Yeah, Elaine. Yeah. Books and things. Back from the good old days. Yeah. 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 Send in my love. Pass that over. <laughs> That. Sure. Once a year, I get to use this gavel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in your packet, um, there is policy um, BDA, which talks about the school community reorganization. So uh, in a nutshell, the way it works is the um, I will be chairing the first part of the reorganization, which is the nomination and election of a chair for the next year. And then I will hand that gavel over to <coughs> the the elected chair, and then the elected chair will uh, do the same process for um, a vice chair. Um, the way it works is I will be accepting nominations for a chairperson from the floor. Um, once we have all the nominations, then it will be a roll call vote for each of the, of the nominees. And then if the majority, which is four, um, if someone gets to four, then they will, they will become the chair, okay? So uh, may I take nominations for chair? I'd like to nominate Chuck. Mr. Robinson, okay. Do we second that or we wait for the vote? Do you, do you have a second? I just want a second. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, Mrs. Doxer. Uh, do I have any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote um, for, for Mr. Robinson as the chair, Mr. Nyan. Yes. Here. No, you say yeah. It's a roll yes. call vote. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Borowski? Yes. Uh, Ms. Joyce? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Yes. Dr. Doxer and Mrs. Webb? Yes. Okay. It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, tough shoes to fill. Uh, I already miss my friend. Uh, <laughs> He's no, probably watching uh, us, right? <laughs> you know, as I, I've done this before, as I said, you know, this role is just the first among equals. Uh, and, you know, everyone uh, can express whatever they want and very open about that. So, and I thank you for the uh, confidence, and uh, I won't let you down. I'm sure you won't. Uh, I'd like to 
take nominations for vice chairman. Yes. This like is what? Nominate, um, Ms. Borowski. I second that. Is there any other nominations? We close the nominations. Uh, um, Ms. We have to get four votes. Uh, Mr. Nyan? Yes. Uh, Ms. Borowski? Yes. Ms. Joyce? Yes. Yes. Doctor. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Very, very nice. Okay. Let's get back to it. Yeah, uh, why don't we uh, go right into reports now? Did you have any reports? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Andrea, did you have any? Um, About two weeks back, the junior prom was a lot of fun. Went really well. Then Fort Yakov was a great place to have it. But the uh, is that is it the ocean behind it? Yeah, well, yeah. It's sort of like a bay. Bay. <laughs> the bay, great spot. Um, right now at RMHS, t-shirts are being show, uh, sold for five bucks a piece. All the proceeds are going towards uh, leukemia research. Um, the RMHS is celebrating National Poetry Month. Uh, this Tuesday and Wednesday, which includes a community poem on Main Street, which students have been contributing to, and readings on poetry readings on a stage in the library. So when you have English, all the classes go down the library, down to Main Street, and just participate in that event. Um, so uh, seniors are kind of narrowing down the days. I think there's like. 15 or 16 days left, so we're coming to an end here. I know AP exams are coming up this week. Um, however, this upcoming weekend, the Drama Club is putting on the Legend, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, it's really cool because the cast actually wrote the play. They took different versions of it and kind of compiled it into one. So it should be very interesting. So hope to see you there. Your role is what are you doing, Andrea, in that? Um, I run the soundboard, so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Denied? I don't even have a committee yet. <laughs> yes. Um, the Human Relations Advisory Committee is meeting next Thursday at 7. We now have an earlier time. I want to make sure people realize that we're meeting at 7, not 7.30. Still at the police station. And on the agenda is a, an upcoming project which will be collaborating with the library on a Frederick Douglass event. We'll be reading a speech together that he made and then looking into our perceptions of what freedom means to us and our perspectives. And we'll also be talking about the status of the committee um, because the sunset clause is coming. So we need to either have it reinstated or redefine it or whatever. So we're looking for new members. Please come. So. I did want to say one thing. Sure. So I heard really good things about John's presentation at the Blue Ribbon. I, I didn't, fortunately didn't get to see it, but uh, I commend you for everything. I've heard some great things from several people. My wife, Karen Janowski, is just two of the people that really commended you for it. So Thank you. Very nice job. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll just say, I mean, I thought that uh, town meeting went well last night uh, with the debate on the lights. Uh, you know, you get when you get home, and I don't know about it, I, I couldn't fall right to sleep. <laughs> Not because I was upset about it, you just, you just wound up, but you think of things that... Uh, and I was just thinking of that slide with all the different fields up there and the amount of use uh, and the teams and the, the and just that I mean town meeting really did something for their community the kids I mean, they really did and the kids and the adults that use it it's uh, you know I think that that's a real positive thing did you, did you have I was just going to let you know that the Special Ed Parent Advisory Council will be meeting next Wednesday, May 6th at 7 o'clock at Coolidge. 
And the purpose of that meeting will be to continue to identify parents who want to play a leadership role, as well as talk about our extended school year program for students with special education needs. I have, I have several items. Um, so first, um, I want to talk a little bit about, we, had, we have a couple searches going on right now. Uh, the first search, which is the Reading Memorial High School Assistant Principal search, um, we, uh, we have a candidate. That candidate um, is um, in, the process of, um, in the process of working on a contract with that person. And my hope is, is that uh, that person will be announced by uh, Mr. Bakker in the next day or two. Um, so I think that one is pretty much um, all taken care of. In terms of the Josh Wheaton, I have sent out something to the Josh Wheaton com community this evening. Um, I am pleased to announce that we have two finalists. Uh, Ryan Eckert, who is the principal right now of the Abraham Lincoln Elementary School in Hammond, Indiana. And Jerry Hammond, not connected to Hammond, Indiana, um, who is a teacher leader in the Brookline Public Schools. Um, both are extremely strong candidates. Um, we had 34 applicants, the screening committee um, interviewed 13, and we now have these two finalists, um, which, which are extremely strong. And uh, next Wednesday, uh, the two finalists will be spending the day, uh, literally a, a marathon <coughs> day at Joshua Eaton. Uh, they'll be getting tours of the school. They will be uh, doing classroom observation. Um, of, a, of a teacher and reporting that out to me. Um, they'll be getting interviewed by fourth grade students and uh, the district leadership team and then they will have open microphone session with staff in the afternoon after school's over and then an open mic microphone session with the community at night. Uh, so it is, it is a long day but um, it's, it's the type of day where the candidates will be interacting with all the different stakeholders of the Josh Wheaton community, which is extremely important to see how, how they interact. Um, and it's, it's part of a long process that we do, but we feel that it's the type of process that's important to, to see who is the best match for a school. Um, so we look forward to that next week. Um, I'm going to move forward with that. The um, couple other things. First, I, I want to talk about it, um, if you had a chance to to look at the newsletter that was sent out this week. Um, it was amazing I, to sit back and take a look at all of the things that, that happened the week prior to um, April vacation in our school district. And certainly we had two big events. We had the Arts Fest, um, which was two nights of student performances and artwork, um, which was amazing. Um, but we also had the, the uh, Blueprint for Institute conference uh, where we had not only our Reading staff involved, but uh, 175 uh, staff, teachers and other administrators from other school districts that, that attended. Um, it was a fantastic two-day conference. Um, there was clearly something for everyone, ranging from behavioral health to um, curriculum frameworks, um, to the arts, um, to technology integration. Uh, there was several different t pertinent topics that are going on in education right now. Um, we had two keynote speakers on Wednesday, Susan Bartoletti, who is an author, a children's book author, historical fiction and, and nonfiction um, author spoke. She actually was working with Coolidge and Parker students leading up to the, the conference and then spoke to um, uh, at the, the Thursday keynote and then Friday we had Bruce Taylor who talked about how um, integrating the arts um, is an essential part and can connect very easily to the, the, uh, the curriculum frameworks in the Common Core. Um, and then he did several workshops with our arts teachers. Um, so those are just two highlights, but we, we had several other highlights as well. And I, I just want to publicly thank Craig Martin for putting together the program. Um, we had a lot of high quality workshop presenters from a variety of venues, not just inside of Reading, but from uh, DESE, from other communities, um, and he, he did a fantastic job, and I know um, 
He will also give credit to Larry Mello, who did a fantastic job with the logistics. Running this conference is no easy task, and Larry did a fantastic job putting it all together. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, as I mentioned, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say the, the hardest part about the conference was figuring out how to prioritize, where to go right. in the limited time. Yeah. And I, I want to give a shout out that you thought of that, Craig, and there's a wiki so that if you missed one, you can even go in and see what you missed and know who to contact. Um, and that it continues on Twitter and yes. other social media sites. So it makes my head spin, but it's it was wonderful knowing that if I picked one, I could still find out about what happened in the other ones where I also wanted to be at the same time. <coughs> so thank you very much. I also wanted to announce, and we'll be sending this out, I wanted to send out the Joshua Eaton information first, and we'll be sending something out tomorrow, that we're going to be having a series of uh, forums, um, as I discussed in, as part of my goals, um, a series of forums um, over the month of May, um, asking some, some key questions um, about the Reading Public Schools, the strengths of the Reading Public Schools, what we would like to see continued, what areas do we feel need to be strengthened, uh, what new programs and initiatives would we would like to see started, um, and what current program or initiatives would you like to see changed or stopped. Um, so uh, I'll be sending out those dates. We have two for the elementary schools, one for the middle school, and one for the high school. We want to we keep the focus at the level so we can make the conversation more rich. So each one will be publicized for that particular level. Um, and they will begin um, starting next week. So that will be sent out uh, tomorrow. Um, we will also be following up with a survey, uh, a short survey to get uh, feedback for, for people that can't attend the forum or want to continue to add feedback beyond the forum. Um, what, what did you say the dates for? I miss. I haven't done the. Uh, well, I've got the dates here, but I'll be sending that out. Okay. Uh, so then May fifth, which is for the high school. May twenty first, which is Barros, for elementary focus. May twenty eighth at Birch Meadow for uh, elementary focus, and May twenty sixth at Coolidge for middle school focus. May is a very difficult month to try to get venues in our schools and nights available. So. Um, Luckily, we were able to find different nights. Yes. Is that for staff and community members? It's for whoever families? wants. It's for whoever wants to attend. It's at night. They're going to be at night. So. So staff will be encouraged to come to share their. We'll offer it. I mean, we're going to offer it to the whole community. So. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I'm, I'm just thinking sort of uh, along the lines of last night, some of your comments at the beginning of town meeting, and how important um, this dialogue is and that we really get um, really strong and broad input from our parent community. And uh, so, you know, we have some very um, difficult and significant choices and discussions to have. So this is a really great start. And I'm also sort of um, thinking you don't want to overwhelm the process and I think you have to think about what the steps are, but it would, at the same time, I think, um, you know, what it would be a good opportunity for just town meeting members to be sort of sitting in the background or the selectmen to be sitting in the background not necessarily you know might maybe it's not um, the, the right time or there, there's nothing that would stop people from having input but clearly you're trying to set this up and get um, information from your direct customers and stakeholders so but I don't the first know. one is Tuesday night right you said the fifth it's the fifth yeah not that no, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. No, we stayed away from. Town meeting. We stayed away from every date that we had a conflict. I just wonder, you know, maybe we should make sure that the, at least like the selectmen and the FinCom members are aware of these sessions, um, as as people who you know just may want to sit in and listen, as as we may also you know want to be trying to do the same thing for these sessions in the same way just seems directly in line with sort of the comments that you made and um, Mr. Engsman. And you know, just so you know, we, we look at this as a first preliminary yes. step of mm -hmm. gathering I data. I agree. I agree, but um, I... Very I, similar to the survey questions that were put up last night for people to react to. I, I look, we look at this as a first step. Right. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm concerned that there's not a lot of lead time anyway, yeah. so we'll have to have, I mean, other nights. I would Absolutely. Because the it, fifth is, you know, it's less than a week away now, so. But it goes out to the 26th. I mean, we're to those different levels. No, but they're, the fifth is the, the high, high, school. high school. Right. The, so, in the, yeah. Unfortunately, because there's so many high school activities, right. There, there aren't any other, believe it or not, there are no other dates available at the high school other than Friday nights, um, which probably wouldn't be a good night, <laughs> um, between now and the end of the school year. No, I, I just think it's, you indicated that we would be taking some steps, and, mm -hmm. you know, and this, I think I see this as, you know, a first step even before town meeting closes, potentially, or, yeah, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Well, hold on, uh, Ms. Joyce. I just... Who's running the farm? You'll be up at the front, yeah. and then we have the other uh, principals there with you. Uh, kind of yes, we're special? we're hoping for each level will have some representation from the, okay. the different. And just to kind of add on to what Elaine said, and um, I think it would be great to get as many community people there as as possible. So it's important to get this message out. The communication. I attended a world cafe uh, with Joshua Eaton this year, and it was a wonderful exercise. I, it, but there were more teachers there than there were parents. Mm -hmm. We need to get the parents there. We really listen to what they're saying. But I learned so much that night, and I felt like my voice was really heard. And I think if people came to this session, they could have a voice as well. And I think this is a, just a terrific way to start the process. Thank you. Yes? I'm wondering if, given that it's only a week away and that the schedule is very crowded, is it possible to have another opportunity for the high school anyways, even if it's after school ends? I mean, it's nighttime anyway, so staff aren't paid. It's not an issue of contract, and administrators work all summer, right? So could we could we certainly do things during the summer. I, I, history has shown you don't get a lot of participation during the summer months. But again, we can do this in the fall as well. We can start doing these in September and October. Yeah, I think that I was thinking that when you said uh, September, yeah, I, because you know, if there's any budget implications. It's still early. It's still early. Oh, I, the purpose, I think, right now is to start getting the message out there, start getting people to think and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's all I have <coughs> for reports. Uh, we have a, some gift trips or donations. 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 Mr. Chair, move to accept a donation in the amount of $3,000 from the Coolidge Science Olympiad Organization to be used to support the coaching assistance. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions? Any yes, comment? sure. I believe that the Coolidge Science team is having their yard sale this weekend. This Saturday. Um, so just a shout out to let people know that that's happening and Thank you. Yeah, Drop I saw off. the sign. I believe Friday? it's Thursday, Thursday and Friday. Friday yeah. And then you can go get your goodies on Saturday. Saturday. Those was in favor of the motion. Six zero. Mr. Chair, move to accept a donation in the amount of one hundred dollars from Mr. Dean Cloris to be used to purchase materials for the RMHS um, Scatini Library. Thank you. Second. 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 Any questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Mr. Chair, move to accept a donation in the amount of five hundred dollars from Mr. and Mrs. Kroll to be used to support the Parker Middle School Band. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Mr. Chair, move to approve the open session minutes dated April 6th, 2015. Is there a second? Second. Any comments on the minutes? No, possible. <laughs> Great. All those in favor? 6 0. Mr. Chair, move to approve the open session minutes dated April 17th, 2015. Second. Second. <coughs> Comments on those? All those in favor? Six zero. Um, thank you. Yes. Sure. sure. 
I just realized also that a reminder might be helpful that the Reading Education Foundation has its imagination celebration this Saturday night, and that they also are doing um, collaborating with the PTOs around um, teacher acknowledgments to raise money. Yes. This year, so teacher tributes. Tributes. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. So I just wanted. Thank you. Thank the you. other thing we uh, should mention is the town meeting reconvenes on. Thursday, but the budget has been moved to Monday night. So uh, hopefully everyone can be there Monday night. Yes. Wait, I was going to report. I think it's next. I was going to report on a UD event, but I think it's still two weeks away. I'm going to look at our meeting. It's the Friday. It's Friday. Friday it's Friday the fifteenth. Friday the fifteenth. Okay, so we meet on the eleventh. But just in terms of organizations that um, support our schools and provide funding. Understanding Disabilities has an event, I believe it's at the Unitarian 30th Church. anniversary or 20th? 30th anniversary. 30th, which is amazing, 30th anniversary, and that's Friday night, the 15th. Correct. So we, will, we do meet on that Monday. I have two calendar items. Sure. So on the 11th of May, um, we I believe it's 6 o'clock, right, Linda? Um, Senator Jason Lewis and uh, Representative Dwyer will be here uh, to uh, probably give us an update on the state budget, but also to answer any questions you have from a state perspective. Um, so we will we'll be posted for six o'clock that that night. Um, on the 18th of May, um, again, as part of um, the the goals that that we uh, we've been talking about, um, we're going to have Dorothy Presser from Massachusetts Association School Committee come and give you an overview of the district governance project um, so that you can um, talk about that, discuss, and set a direction on how many of the modules, module, not modular, sorry, wrong one, modules <laughs> um, you want to uh, focus on. So she'll give an overview yes, on all Yes, she's going to give an overview. Right. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say she's, I think Dorothy's excellent. I'm really glad she's coming here. She's a long, long time um, Linfield School Committee member and was always involved with NASC as a member and now she worked for NASC. So she sort of knows Reading as well and you know, is sort of familiar with our, our community and our community. Is Brad coming? Brad, uh, unfortunately, um, I believe has a broken leg and isn't able to attend a lot of uh, functions these days because of that. Maybe a blessing. <laughs> that the governance project does not cost the town, it does not cost anything. It's a free program. I, I, yes, yes, I believe so. Mass. Questions? Motions? Move to adjourn. Second. Second.